Chevy, Ford, Dodge. They've been putting out trucks for quite a while now. Now, there's been some good and there's been some not so good. That's the beauty of having taste and interest when it comes to truck is you get to enjoy what you enjoy and love and other guys, well, they can fuck off. Chevy, Ford, Dodge, they've all been putting out trucks for quite a while now. Now there's been some good, there's been some bad. Heck, there have even been some models that maybe some love, but some others just, you know, do not. And that's totally okay. That's the beauty of having taste and interest in what you enjoy and love yourself. At the end of the day, there will always be an opinion. There will always be that word overrated with something to prove. There have been many times on this channel when we have brought up that word underrated or overrated. And we're gonna be doing that again today. Fuck I'm up. Lawson, you guys can find me at Lawson with two N's that CO on the gram. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the most overrated trucks from each manufacturer of the big three in Chevy, Ford, and Dodge. Let's get into it. <laughs> now before we hop into it, just know that this is opinion based. Everyone and anyone is going to have their own opinion, so make sure you guys blow up the freaking comment section and let us know your guys' most overrated trucks from each manufacturer, because that'd be pretty cool uh, to see your guys' opinion and let us know why. I'm curious to see what you guys think. We recently did a most overrated trucks from each brand and y'all killed it in the comment section. It was so cool to see you guys sending me trucks and the comment section blowing up and we just got to talk trucks. That's what we're trying to do here on this channel. Try to talk trucks in the comment section below. What are we trying to talk about? Trucks! Now, if you guys haven't seen the underrated version, definitely go check that out. And also, if you guys need anything for your truck, customoffsets.com. We got wheels, we got tires, we got suspension, we got accessories, lighting, we got performance, we've got our ambassador program. We got all sorts of stuff, customoffsets.com. Just go browse. All right, now first up, let's talk about Chevy. For the longest time, this has been the most popular Chevy body style and still is to this day. Of course, I'm talking about the freaking cat eye. I mean, come on, what do people see in this thing? Sorry, Dustin, but these things are freaking trash. Are you kidding me? Okay, I'm just kidding. Bro. Cat eyes are extremely popular to this day and they are a pretty solid option and aren't today's pick. Come on. Oh, no, no. Today we're talking about the 07 to 13 Silverado 1500. I know guys, I have one and that's why this is easy to talk about for the most overrated Chevy. I'm not biased and I know there are a lot of issues when it comes to these trucks. I've been through the headaches. Now sure, there are a ton of these things rolling around, but they don't always line up with the hype. Have you guys seen how the bedsides skip above the wheel wells? Have you seen all the rust? I literally had to repair that, it sucked. Have you seen what happens to the doors? Sorry, Bailey, but it's pretty common. Now the seal on the door is just poorly done and water gets inside and before you know it, there's huge holes in your freaking door. The other day we had a huge storm that lasted for quite a while and a couple days later, I opened up my rear door and had like heard a ton of sloshing inside the door. This literally happens. I had to pull the seal and drain it. It's just something you don't think that you have to worry about when shopping for a truck. Then there's the drum brakes in the rear. The cat eye comes out and they have disc brakes and then Chevy goes back to drum brakes? Come on, man. Drum brakes are less appealing, less sought after, and it was just mind blowing that Chevy really went backwards in technology after hitting the cat eye with non-drum brakes. Come on, man. Oh yeah, and don't forget about the DOD or displacement on demand. The old active fuel management system. Dumb, 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 dumb. Let's just turn cylinders off to save fuel. If you buy a truck, chances are, you probably know that you aren't gonna get Prius MPGs. Let's be freaking honest. We don't buy trucks for miles per gallon. We buy them for smiles per gallon. Sure, we all talk with buddies about how many miles per gallon we're gonna get with our truck, but turning off cylinders to save gas? Come on, man. Now, sure, I was able to disable that through my Bully Dog Tuner, which you guys can get on our website under the performance section, but still not an ideal design. Come on, Chevy. Past that, body styling and interiors, when looking back over the years, was lackluster. If you're cool with scooping one up and making one your own like I did, there are just some things you might have to accept and change, and hey, that's okay. I literally went through my whole truck Minus some interior stuff because I got like an upgraded option and it came with the leather and I was cool with it. But past that, you know, you gotta make your truck your own and 
it might be a solid option. Just be aware of some of these things. I'm not kidding. Now, next up on our list is Ford. Before you blow up the comment section, I think we can all agree that this truck had its fair share of issues, the 7.3 Power Stroke. Sure, these things were reliable if you didn't throw a ton of power at them. They got a bad reputation due to the lack of horsepower. Now, the moment you would add power to these things, the transmission would say, nah, man, not today. And next thing you know, you're shopping for a new transmission. Camshaft position, can, ah! Camshaft position. I like the old camshaft position. <laughs> camshaft per, <laughs> camshaft position. I'm done. <laughs> camshaft position sensor. Camshaft position sensor failure, leaking fuel filter housing, turbo up pipe leaks, bent push rods and valve springs, exhaust back pressure valve failure, under valve cover harness, injection pressure regular failure. <sighs> There's just some issues with these trucks, just some. Also, you guys always hear us talk about supporting suspension components, beefing up your components so that you don't have to worry about things going out when lifting your truck. For some reason, maybe the weight of the 7.3 created a lot of supporting suspension components going out or wearing faster than normal. Now sure, there were some pros to the old 7.3 engine. You guys ever hear the notorious guys talking about their diesels or their buddy's diesels that have so many freaking miles on the original motor? The phrase that diesels run freaking forever? Well, the 7.3 stood up to that test. With the low horsepower output and the over engineering of the motor and internals, this made for racking up the miles with no problem and having a lifespan of B50 or 50% of trucks would make it to 350,000 freaking miles. It's a lot of miles, bud. Like I could hit the Daytona Beach truck meet from Wisconsin and back 258 times. Sheesh. Now earlier I listed off some common issues with the motor and now I'm praising how far these things can freaking go. With anything as time goes on and you use it, parts wear out and things have weak spots in their production. Same goes for the 7.3. They can be great and they could be a nightmare. Let's just hope you guys know what you're doing when it comes to the 7.3 Power Stroke. Last but not least, Dodge. From 1994 to 2002, this truck was notorious for rolling coal with high horsepower from its either 12 valve or 24 valve Monster 5.9 liter engine. I'm of course talking about the second gen Cummins. Now we could talk about the gassers too, but let's be honest, no one talks about the half tons besides Coda. Sorry, Coda, love you. From 1994 to 1998, these trucks were equipped with the 12 valve putting out around 170 horsepower and 420 foot pounds of torque, depending on what transmission you had. Fast forward to 1998 and a half to 2002 is when they dropped in the 24 valve and started to produce more power sitting around the 230 horsepower and 450 foot pounds of torque. Damn, son. For the longest time, Cummins has been in the talks of having some of the longest running, best power output engines, diesel racing, sled pulling, Cummins. It's not uncommon to see some of these things pushing over a thousand horsepower with some small upgrades. Now, after all that praise, what makes them overrated? Being that these trucks are 20 to 25 years old, things are going to be quite a bit outdated. Take the interiors, for example, very basic, cheap, and not quite desirable. In the most underrated truck video, I covered the third gen, and although their interiors weren't ideal, they could easily direct bolt in swap a fourth gen interior with some minor wiring modifications. These things rusted out like freaking crazy, and finding a clean one today could be challenging. Today's video is sponsored by Monster. Sponsor us, Monster like Ken Block. Let's not forget that Dodge gets a bad rep for their transmission, but they really weren't good in those trucks. Oh, and let's not freaking forget about the 53 blocks cracking in the 9901s. That's right, they were known to crack. Your block was known to crack. The 24 valve engine block was manufactured by a Brazilian company for a couple years and was known to crack under heavy towing, failing to let the engine properly warm and cool and engine overheating. Really sounds not fun at all. Now sure, there were a lot of options in the second gen Cummins when it came to drivetrain, 12 valve for reliability, 24 valve for some more power. But let's not forget about the notorious VP44 injection pump failure. These things got a bad rap due to the poor design of the lift pump. 
The diaphragm would rupture in front of the injection pump, allowing the timing piston to vibrate and damage the front cover until fuel just passes. Now you have a terrible check engine light code and your lift pump doesn't supply the correct amount of fuel pressure and your diaphragm ruptures with not enough positive pressure. Not a good freaking time, man. At the end of the day, that's what I got for you guys. There's some good, there's some bad, but that is what we got for you guys on today's video of the most overrated trucks from the big three manufacturers, Chevy, Ford, and Dodge. Like I said before, if you guys have a truck that you think is more overrated, drop it down in the comment section below. Let's get the comment section blowing up and let's just talk trucks. That is literally the section where you guys can talk to us about trucks and we wanna know what you guys think. As always, wheels, tires, suspension, performance, accessories, customoffsets.com. We'll see you guys on the next one.